Hello everyone, Dan Herb with Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. Welcome back to Paydirt Week. I have been evaluating paydirts all week long. I've done four others up to now. Today is the fifth and final paydirt, and today's paydirt is actually my own. Now, of course, I can't do an unbiased review of my own paydirt because, well, I made it. But I would like to highlight and show you what is in this paydirt. And hopefully you trust me enough that I haven't, you know, falsified anything here. And if you'd like to see an impartial review, Clash Guitars did one a while back. I hope you enjoy. Now, before I break into it, the Dan Hurd Prospecting Pay Dirt, let me tell you a little bit about it first. This, the pay dirt itself in here, the dirt itself comes from three different claims of mine. Pickerton claim, another Fraser River claim, which will go unnamed, but it is a good one, and my Thompson River claim. It was all harvested legally away from the high water mark and mixed together to make up about a half pound of unsearched dirt in my pay dirt bags. And then I salt it with some gold and many different gemstones and some silver, some other things. I take a pinch of gold that goes in each one. I put sapphires, peridot, garnets, topaz, quartz crystals, agates and opals, and of course, diamonds. There's diamonds in every bag. They're tiny. They're really tiny, but they're real diamonds. Let's talk about the packaging. I am in your typical Mylar packaging that you see most pay dirts in. This one has a clear front on it, so you can actually see what's inside. And if you move the dirt around a little bit, you can usually get a glimpse of some of the treasures inside. Like there's the big quartz crystal. It has not been heat sealed, so you can open it up and close it without ripping it open. But let's open it up and see what's inside. Here we go. There's the inside of the bag. There's the dirt in the bag. Ooh. Now let's bring over a not so dry pan and see what it looks like in the pan. Okay, well, let's have a look and see what we can see in there. Anyone see anything special? <laughs> of course, right on top. There is a piece of gorgeous appetite. No, I'm not hungry. That's the name of the rock. It is appetite, a blue gemstone. Beautiful. And we have over here our jelly opal from one of my opal claims. Very cool. What else do I see in here? Anything spectacular? Anything interesting? Well, there is the quartz crystal. Nice long spire there. Um, moving around, moving around. Oh, oh, oh. We have a beautiful beautiful polished garnet. Yeah. I need something to put all this in. Let's put it in the pan. Garnet, quartz, opal, appetite. And what else can we find in here? Oh, there is a nice piece of baradot. Peridot green gemstone. Yeah, very gemmy green. This comes from my peridot claim outside of Vernon. And keep looking, keep looking. It's fun searching through this stuff. Now I should mention that many of these gemstones, peridot, sapphire, all of them are 
heavy so when you pan them out they should end up in the bottom of the pan the opal is the only one that isn't heavy and would float away not float away but stay up in the top it wouldn't sink to the bottom of your pan oh oh there we go Ooh, look what i found just poking around that's nice looking where'd it go right there right there nice looking piece of gold That's what we're talking about. Gold. Put that back in the pan. Now, let's see what else we can see in here. Poking around. There is something. There's another one of those. Get it. Ah, I can't get it. Another one of those polished garnets. That's all I can see just by poking around. Let's get it wet and see what it looks like wet. Now, as I mix it all up, it's going to get really muddy. And that's because the Fraser River dirt is very, very muddy dirt. I'm going to rinse off the mud here so you can see what the dirt looks like without all the mud on the surface. Okay, here's a good shot of what this stuff looks like nice and wet now if you see angled shale type rocks in here those come from the pickerton claim because a lot of the dirt i dug from pickerton claim was right out of shale cracks so you see all the angled shale in here that's directly from my pickerton claim the round rocks those are all from my other fraser claim and if you see any sort of little granular things that's probably from the thompson river like that these typical smaller rocks there's our granule there from the Thompson River well let's pan this down and see what we find now panning this down is very important that we go really slow because the gemstones even though they are heavy and will sink to the bottom aren't as heavy as gold and will wash away easier than gold so we have to take it nice and slow to make sure we don't lose the gemstones especially since I don't have a safety pan underneath if I lose anything, it's just down in the bottom. Gone! Some of the bigger rocks. Now, I should also tell you that if you'd like to get your own Dan Hurd Prospecting pay dirt, you can get it off my website, www.danherdprospecting.com. They are $40 a bag. And I'm just about to mix up 25 new bags, and I'm going to put a big nugget in one of them. The rest get a small pinch of gold, one of them's going to have a big nugget. Okay, we're getting down there. We'll have a look at what it looks like. A little bit farther before I go and check it out. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go see what we find. Ooh, I see right now, before I go any farther, a gorgeous big polished garnet. That's a beauty. I also see, well, I see that nugget we saw earlier, little nugget. And I also see a piece of silver. I put silver in each and every one of my bags so people can see what silver looks like versus gold. Nice little silver nugget. Get this up here so you guys can see. I'm gonna swirl, swirl, swirl. Oh, there's all the gold. One really nice piece. 
not every bag gets a piece that big. And then a bunch of little stuff. That's some pretty nice gold. Every bag does have a bigger piece in it, but that's, that's a doozy, that one. I didn't know which bag I was grabbing. I just grabbed one out of the pile. And um, this isn't necessarily a bonus bag. A bonus bag would have much more than that. But that is a nice piece. Now let's see what else I find in here. Down in these gravels, we should, in the very bottom, we should find the pieces of topaz. Here we go. There is the topaz. Nice, clear topaz crystal. And what else do we see down here? Uh, black rock? Nope. One thing I should note is the more light you have on it for gem hunting, the better. Sunlight is the best, but it's nighttime right now. So let's see what my flashlight shows. Oh yeah. Looking around, looking around. What do I see? I see lots of garnets. Lots and lots and lots of garnets. There's, I see the chunk of sapphire. Here's our sapphire. Nice blue sapphire. Heat treated sapphire, so it's nice and blue. Ooh, another sapphire. Another little sapphire. Now to find the diamond in here, you want as much light as you can get. Outside in bright sunlight is the best, but it's night right now, so flashlight will do. And I'm gonna look around in here. I saw it once a second ago. There it is there. It's very yellow. These are yellow diamonds. And one thing you need to know about uh, diamonds is they're very hydrophobic. They will float easier than gold if they are if they touch the surface of the water. So. Uh, I've had people tell me that they've had to go through their mix with a fine tooth comb over and over and over again before they found the diamond. And that's probably because the diamond floated away on them. Let me grab this diamond right now. Here we are. In my hand. And there we are. There is the diamond that's in this mix. Some mixes have more than one. Some of them I put two or three in. I don't know about this one. I found one. I'm happy that I found one because they can be hard, hard, hard to find. Now have a good look around, make sure there's nothing else I missed. The flashlight was in my mouth, but look at that right there. Do you see it? If it doesn't show up too well in the camera, I'll put, uh, I'll mark it on the screen somehow, but there's a second diamond. Do you see how bright it's glowing in there beside that rock? Just, that's why bright light helps so much because they just glow they glow so much with that bright light. Let's get that one out of there. I got two. I got a twofer. Mm -hmm. Diamond. Two diamonds. Let's get the gold out and dried and see how much it weighs. Woohoo! Well, there's the gold that was in my pay dirt. Let's go weigh it up and see how much it weighs. There it is. It weighs precisely 0.23 grams. 0.23 grams of gold in my little bag of pay dirt. 
plus of course all sorts of gems and minerals of all kinds apodite garnet topaz sapphires peridot opal quartz crystal and of course the two little diamonds now let's look at goldkelp.com to see what that gold is worth we'll plug into here 0.23 grams we're going to st start with 18 carat and see what it says that's eight dollars and 78 cents but of course, as I said before, placer gold, we want to calculate with spot value because to buy placer gold, that's what you're going to be paying. So instead, let's go 0 0.23 at 24 karat, which is spot price. And today's value of gold is 1583, dropped a little bit overnight. There we go, $11.71 american this bag was forty dollars canadian forty dollars canadian is about thirty dollars american so for thirty dollars american you get about eleven well twelve dollars worth of gold and all of those gemstones plus a whole lot of fun now that's about a forty percent return on investment if you're just calculating the gold into that but of course, that bag is supposed to be a whole lot more than just gold. That's the whole purpose of the gem and gold bag. Shows you kind of anything you might find typically worth value in a gold pan when you're in the field panning. I have found peridot, I've found garnet, I have found sapphires, I have found topaz. I've never found a diamond in the field, but one day I will. I sure hope so, at least. Quartz crystals, sure. Opal, yes. It shows you what you might find when you're in the field gold panning. So the idea of this bag is not for the value of gold. It's for the experience and the knowledge, for sure. Let's look back at all five pay dirts I did over the last week and sort of evaluate what each one is really good for. Now, if you're looking for the best return on investment of all the ones I just did here, there's no doubt, pan in the can from nip and tuck. Big pieces of gold, a lot of it, other things in there to find as well. So of all the ones I just did, my recommendation right now, pan in the can, for sure. Now there was nothing wrong with Irwin's pay dirt. It had good gold. There was a lot of material in there, a lot of gold. And a 50% return on investment, nothing wrong with that. Klesh, well Klesh makes good pay dirt, but he doesn't have any in stock right now. So, hmm. When he gets more in stock, sure, right now, he doesn't have any. If you only have a little bit to spend, this little tiny bag from Yarika Gold Sands had some good gold in it. It wasn't bad. For a, for a budget, definitely. And mine, I'm going to let you make that determination. It is not designed for a great return on investment. It's designed to show you everything you could find in a gold pan and to have a lot of fun along the way. It is a bit of a challenge. If you want a good challenge, if you want to have fun, if you want to support my channel, definitely check me out on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com. In my store, I have pay dirt bags. The gem and gold is the one I recommend. But if you just like gold, I got that there too. But the overall winner from my week of pay dirt, I have to say, is the pan in the can from the Nick and Tuck. I will show you the shots of all the materials I use for making my bags here. Really good pictures of it at the end. But before that, big thanks to my patrons out there. Your support means a lot to me. Because of your support, I get to make all these videos for everyone to watch. Thank you, patrons. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave that thumbs up and a comment below. Also, if you're new to my channel and have not yet subscribed and you like what you saw, there's a good chance you're going to like what's to come in the future. Please consider subscribing so you never miss an episode. Remember, 25 new bags being mixed up, one has a big nugget. I hope you all enjoyed. Until the next one. Bye. Here's the loot. <laughs>
we have Pleasure, Erwin, Eureka, Pan in the Can, and Dan Hurd. Great little Pater week.